My phone says it's three o'clock. My computer says it's 2.59, uh, but we will start. Please be sure to mute yourself. Uh, you'll see the microphone symbol in the taskbar. If you want to communicate, uh, you can unmute yourself or you can uh, text uh, your comments in the chat. So here we go. We have uh, today's update is going to cover a bunch of materials. Here our agenda. We're going to talk about the taxonomy, the classification system that is used by the ATAC programs in the data collection efforts. We're going to talk about a recent survey and much appreciation extended to those programs who responded. Going to talk a little bit about our finalized competencies, which can be found on the at3center.net website. Uh, somebody 601 area code, you're not muted, please mute yourself. We'll talk about how you've used those competencies, if you've used them, and what we could do to improve them. I recently emailed out two drafts, one for competencies for quote computers and related and one for leisure, recreation and sports. And I will be soliciting for volunteers to assist in the development of the vehicle modification and transportation competencies. So here we go. Just a few words about the taxonomy. You will find the definitions in the instruction manual for the annual progress reporting. And you can find that manual at the katata.info site and follow the link to AT program resources and click on the APR instruction manual. The definitions and decision rules are there on pages four through 15, 14. And it's really important for you to review and become familiar with how to classify items, especially items that could fit in more than one category. And uh, as you look at that taxonomy, you'll see that the classification depends on who's using the item, what it's being used for. And you should be training uh, not only all your staff, but also any subcontractors so that your data is correct and consistent. Uh, again, if you're on the phone and your phone number is 601-853-5151, please mute yourself. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about how to classify items that could fit in more than one category. Uh, especially that pertains to items that are used to assist an individual with vision or hearing impairment. So even if the item could fit in a different category, if the user is using it because they have a vision disability or a hearing disability, that's where it goes. I also just wanted to review that both the home modifications and the vehicle modifications categories talk about things that are permanent or semi-permanent. So just keep those definitions in mind as we go through the results of the survey. So you may recall that last month, uh, month of October, I initiated a SurveyMonkey survey 
in response to an inquiry regarding whether or not there were uh, state programs that had a core inventory. That is an inventory that minimally uh, represented items across categories that each of their demo uh, centers had if they have multiple centers. And while I was surveying everyone, I uh, wanted to know what were your must have items if you're identifying or developing a core uh, inventory? What was it that was important to have uh, in a variety of levels of cost or complexity. So we did have 22 programs respond. And of those, most of them were the lead agencies. Some were the implementing agency, if different from the lead agency. And we did have two subcontractors respond uh, because they were the responsible entities for device lending or demo. So not quite uh, half of our programs, but a pretty robust uh, representation nonetheless. So I asked, uh, and I had asked this in the spring survey as well, uh, how do you determine what devices you're going to add to your inventory? So the number one was by consumer requests. Number two was staff recommendations, and these are in rank order. Number three was additions based on waiting lists. Number four, new items just coming on the market. And that's often closely tied to consumer requests and staff recommendations. Uh, when a manufacturer or a vendor puts a new item on the market, uh, they typically like to generate a lot of buzz that filters down to our consumers who in turn may be requesting the item from your demo or loan program. Not surprisingly, if you get a good deal uh, or a donation on a product, you may want to put that in your program as well. And then uh, coming up at the, at the end were recommendations from partners, uh, advisory councils, vendors, or items available through other programs. Again, I would suggest to you that making some of these decisions about purchasing is a good opportunity to engage your advisory council. So you can at least ask them for recommendations uh, and uh, additions to your wish list. So I asked the question, if you have multiple sites or regional centers, does each site have a similar inventory? And there were 21 responses. So what we find, and if you've been around a while, you probably know this, inventories vary vastly because of a number of, of factors. Frequently, the sites may specialize in serving a particular age or disability type. So a program may have a community partner uh, that they either do devices in, in exchange for data or other designated funding to serve a particular age group, for example, early intervention. Or they may be partnered with an entity that's already known to serve people with a particular disability type, for example, uh, contracting with an agency that serves individuals with vision disabilities uh, as a natural partner to do demonstrations or loans on vision equipment. Uh, if you subcontract with sites, the inventories may vary depending upon uh, the other kinds of funding or resources that those subcontracted sites may already have. So for example, if you're contracting with an Easter seal that has a long history of providing AT services, they may already have a robust 
uh, inventory that may differ from a different or another site in your state or territory. Uh, some programs, a few programs, indicated that this is something that they're working on, that they would like to have greater consistency, at least in terms of a core inventory uh, between and, and among their sites. So we did get two uh, programs that have a uniform inventory, or at least an inventory that they use for starting up their sites. And this would be uh, Alaska and Florida. So my advice to you would be to contact Misty or contact Mike in Florida if you want the full listing of what's in their inventory uh, for their demo program. Uh, there were four programs that only had one site that does demo or loan and that would be either their central office site or a contracted partner. So we'll talk a little bit next about the highlights of the items that were identified by name in each category and level of cost. So just a few words of interest. There was a uh, a lot of disagreement about what constitutes low cost or low tech, which I arbitrarily assigned to under $50 for the purposes of the survey. Mid tech, kind of mid cost, 51 to $200, or high tech, higher cost, $201 or more. And we know that can be uh, $201 up to thousands of dollars. I also noted problems with categorization. And that's why uh, I wanted to mention that in the introductory remarks and refer you back to the definitions in the taxonomy. We'll talk a little bit more uh, about that uh, as we proceed by categories. If you want to see the actual survey results in each category, uh, just let me know and I'll give you the raw data. Uh, in today's call, I'll just be highlighting the ones that's the items that seem to appear pretty frequently. So vision. So the definition in the APR instructions is products designed to assist with vision. Pretty straightforward. The challenge comes if it's an item that might be used by uh, somebody with a vision disability to do another kind of function. If it's an item used to assist somebody with vision disability, it is counted as vision. Now, if you have a person uh, who is blind and also has a significant speech disability and uses AAC, the AAC is going to be classified not under vision, but under speech communication because that tool has to do not with a seeing function, but with a communication function. So in the area of low tech, low cost, uh, people mentioned some sort of writing guide, whether it's a signature guide, a check guide, an, uh, an envelope guide, uh, people felt that that was an important kind of low tech to have in their uh, demo or and or lending program. We saw here also, this is under $50, uh, magnifiers with all kinds of uh, features, lighted, handheld, stand-based, etc. And a talking watch. Uh, also fell in this category. In the mid-range, 
We saw, again, magnifiers with varying features, the ones that were a little pricier. Keys you see, which would be an adapted keyboard, but it is for somebody with a vision disability. So it goes in the vision category rather than in the computer access category. We also saw uh, responses for the pen friend and the C pen. In the high tech category, portable handheld video magnifiers of all makes and models were mentioned as important to have. Um, and many more portable handheld video magnifiers referred to uh, only one or two of the respondents referred to video magnifiers, uh, desktop magnifiers. Uh, you'll see as we go through these, I've asterisked uh, ones that are uh, the uh, higher frequency responses. So under the category of apps for vision, several, I think at least five, people indicated seeing AI, and at least four indicated the KNFB reader as important apps to have on your tablets. Hearing. So again, here's the definition from the APR, products designed to assist with hearing. It's really products designed to assist people with a hearing disability with hearing. So the lower tech, low cost, vibrating alarm clock, amplified phone, and alerting devices. In the mid tech range, my goodness, I think there were more than half of the respondents indicated a pocket talker should be in your core inventory, along with alerting devices and other personal FM systems. In the high-tech arena, again, alerting systems, and sometimes when you get those alerting systems as a kit, that obviously will increase the price. So several people did note uh, an alerting system. Ubi Duo, sound field systems, and specialized phones, particularly uh, caption phones. In the category of app, we had five indicate the AVA app, also Flipwriter, TV Loud, and a variety of signing apps. In speech communication, this is just a minute, I'm gonna check in. All right, I don't see any, uh, any comments. Hopefully everybody is able to follow as we move through the slides. Okay, speech communication are products designed to assist with speaking and face-to-face -face communication for individuals with speech disabilities. Low tech, not surprising. We saw picture-based paper systems, uh, perhaps like PEX, talking photo album, picture frame, and low tech symbol kits. In the mid talk, mid tech range, go talks of every variety. So whether it was a go talk nine, a go talk twenty, uh, people are enamored of that product as a mid-range AAC device. And I'm happy to announce that we will have attainment of the vendors of the GoTalks doing a webinar for us in January. And they'll also be sharing a discount and deals with us at that time. People also mentioned the Big Mac and similar kinds of talking switches or buttons. In the high tech, Nova Chat was hands down uh, the most, most frequently mentioned product. A uh, couple of people mentioned Accents, uh, Toby Eye Gaze, 
and there were a few mentions of the Toby Indy. And if you haven't already known, uh, you should know that Dynavox is stopping uh, the sales of the Indy. So don't go buy an Indy. The apps most frequently mentioned were ProLoquo to go and touch chat. And there were some other apps like verbally also mentioned as well. Okay. Oops, sorry, duplicate slide here. So devices classified as devices for learning, cognition, or development. So these are products to provide people with disabilities with access to educational materials in school or other environments for learning and cognition. So in the low tech, area, we got some timers, switches and adapted toys, and visual supports. In the mid-tech, and interesting that this appeared both in mid-tech and high-tech, were the smart pens, whether it was a live scribe or the C pen. Uh, these were identified as core items. Under the apps, we had uh, dictation apps, voice dream reader, and visual timers. Devices for mobility, seating, and positioning. So this is an area where I believe there's some confusion about whether it is positioning the person or positioning for access, something that aids in, posi in the position of a device. So for example, mounting systems, i.e. a wheelchair mount for an AAC system, really belongs under the speech communication category rather than under devices for mobility, seating, and positioning. Again, if you go back to the instructions for the APR, you will see uh, the decision rules that should be guiding your classification. Now, please know that AT3 is going to be looking at the exemplar products that are mentioned in the uh, taxonomy because some of those are outdated, uh, but I do believe that the basic taxonomy, which is a core for data collection across access and acquisition activities, will not be substantively changed. So low tech for devices for mobility, seating, and positioning. We saw canes. Uh, seat cushions, uh, wheelchairs, although I doubt that those would be under $50, wedges, under mid-tech, transfer belt, rollator, although I think most of those are going to be on over $200, seat assist cushions, the lift assist cushions, and as we discussed, I uh, it's a little concerned about mounting systems being referenced uh, in this category. Under high tech, uh, people had power chairs, gate trainers. And again, this isn't necessarily uh, for lending, but for demo. And under apps, uh, GPS and wheel map. I'm just going to take a moment to check the chat. Okay. Okay. So hopefully you are seeing the slide 
that references devices for mobility, seating, and positioning. Okay, well, and now moving on to the next one. Devices for daily living. And this is where you would uh, classify devices that are gonna help people with what are typically considered by ADL instrumental activities of daily living or sometimes ADL activities of daily living. With the exception, if it is an item to help a person who is blind with ADLs, it would be classified under vision. So uh, low-tech reachers, dressing aids, uh, kinds of uh, adapted utensils, pill organizers, mid-tech liftware, extremely popular item across our respondents, medication administration systems, under high tech, we also saw liftware, and I know they have kits and uh, different configurations that you could purchase. The OB, which is the feeding robot, and you may recall that we did have a webinar from those folks, and there is a discount and deal listed on the uh, demo loan uh, archive. Hoyer Lift the internet of things, devices, the smart homes kinds of things, and under apps, a range of pill reminders, list making, a calendar and alarm apps, and picture schedules. Environmental adaptations. So again, this is something that you may want to refresh yourselves on the definition for the APR. And, and remember that the, this taxonomy is used not just for demo and loan, but also for state financing. So uh, just keep that in mind as well. So environmental adaptations is defined as adaptations to the built environment that remove or reduce barriers. Uh, somebody's not on mute, please mute yourself. Um, and you'll see I've put in italics, typically permanent or semi-permanent structures, modifications, or additions. So I'm listing on this slide things that people responded to in the survey, uh, which may or may not actually meet the definition as I've uh, reviewed it here. So low tech, uh, switches, doorbell systems, lighting, extended door hinges, mid tech, no drill grab bar, uh, smart home kinds of products, and in high tech, uh, we also saw the Internet of Things smart home systems. Now, some of you, I know this is true in West Virginia, are, are um, uh, lucky enough to have adapted uh, rooms to demonstrate. So in West Virginia, they actually have an adapted kitchen with pull down shelving. Uh, again, obviously, that's just for demo and not for loan. Many of you talked about uh, the smart home system app controls as being important uh, additions. Next category is vehicle modifications, transportation. Products that give people with disabilities independence and enhance safety through the adaptation of vehicles. Uh, again, this is meant to be semi-permanent or permanent, uh, but um, not so much in the responses. So uh, Handy Bar was the, the winner 
in the low tech category. So if, if it's not permanent, but it goes in a car to help somebody get in and out of a car, where do you classify it? Getting into a car would be classified as an activity of daily living. Some programs are lucky enough to have an accessible van. I think that is hardly low cost, uh, but they are lucky to have it. Uh, car handles, transfer disc, uh, again, because it's not permanent or semi, if it's not permanent or semi-permanent, it would really go under ADL. High tech steering wheel adaptations and ramps. So if it was an adapted vehicle with a ramp, yes, it's in this category correctly. Again, you're lucky if you have a vehicle on which you can uh, demonstrate. So apps included Google Maps, GPS, and Waze. So last week, I think it was just last week, I did um, ask the Demo Loan COP uh, what they had uh, to help with uh, vehicles. And if you're curious, most of these are either semi-permanent or completely not permanent. So it's debatable whether it goes under vehicle mods or not. Uh, but if you're interested in expanding your repertoire for a demonstration, uh, these are some of the items that you may want to consider. And thanks to, gosh, we had about eight or 10 programs responding, either that they had these items or they didn't have anything in this uh, area. So, um, I'd be a little bit leery about loaning some of these things. Um, I tend to be risk averse and can only imagine lending a steering wheel knob and the person having an accident, but certainly uh, may be great for demonstration. So here's the computers and related category. And again, the purpose uh, or the definition is those hardware and software products to enable computer access. So let's go back and think about the person who uses AAC for speech communication. If they also use their device uh, for computer access, uh, then you have to decide, and it's probably going to be the primary use is AAC. If they use uh, their eye gaze computer um, for computer access, but they use a separate system for AAC, then the eye gaze computer may in fact fall under computers and related. So again, what I encourage you to do is carefully review the decision rules when you're making the determination. Low tech, uh, which low cost in the survey, trackball, adapted keyboards, unless of course the keyboard was somebody for somebody with a vision disability, right? In which case it's classified under vision. And glad to see that the built-in features of operating systems were mentioned here. Of course, that's no cost. The mid-cost, we had uh, ergonomic mouse and other alternative mice. Again, adapted keyboards, and we know that those vary in cost and complexity, and switch interfaces. High-tech devices, uh, head mouse, eye trackers, uh, brand name glass house, and speech to text. And for apps, we had uh, many, many people refer to Dragon Naturally Speaking, 
uh, Sesame Enable, and note-taking apps, as well as the built-ins. Okay, uh, popular items by category and cost under recreation, sports, and leisure. So this is where you would put items, if you haven't already put them in another area, if it helps people with disabilities participate in sports, health, phys ed, recreation, leisure, and dance. So if you already are counting adapted toys under uh, cognition, learning, and development, you're not going to also put them here, typically. So you need to decide uh, where you're going to categorize things because you may not double count them. Adapted toys was a very, very popular response, as well as card holders. Now, uh, several people put sound balls, beeping balls in this category. These are devices typically for people with vision disabilities, so they actually belong in the vision category. Mid-tech, the use of the Internet of Things with music. Uh, a lot of people mentioned adapted toys and games. Uh, I did see several responses of brailled board games, which would belong actually in the vision category. High-tech, Adapted game controllers, and this is an emerging area of interest for people with disabilities uh, who are wannabe gamers as the products, there become uh, more and more products on the market for that. Bikes, there's a couple of programs that actually both demo and loan adapted bikes and trikes and adapted devices for hunting and fishing. Under apps, people talked about ebooks, certainly uh, one of my favorite leisure activities. Gaming or video apps and music apps, such as those that allow you to, quote, play uh, piano or guitar on the app. All right, are there any questions on that survey or on any of the comments about the classification of items? Okay, wanted to reflect a little bit on the competencies that uh, have been posted, I believe, since last spring. Uh, and this is the link to uh, where you will find them. And I wanted to know, and this is a moment for audience participation, if you have used any of these, which ones have you used and how have you used them? So for example, uh, we suggested that you use them for professional development uh, so that staff could take a look at a category in which they desire to improve their skills and target the skills they wanted to improve. Or if you are recruiting or looking to hire somebody you could delineate the kinds of competencies that you'd like them to have in a particular area uh, to complement the skills that uh, and competencies that other staff people have. So again, audience participation. If you would um, enter in a chat or you can unmute yourself if you would like to address 
that question or the second question on this slide. Any recommendations for changing or improving the usefulness of these documents? Anybody? Are you all still there? Um, if, you've, if you've not used them, uh, can you uh, perhaps say why you haven't used them? Now, maybe you forgot they were there. Okay, well, you are also welcome to share your responses to that question privately with um, me uh, or Kathy, since we were the primary authors, um, along with some of uh, the AT program staff who we turn to as subject matter experts. Okay. All right, uh, so I did send out to you um, a little bit ago two drafts of competencies, one of computers and related, and one of um, for leisure, uh, sport, and recreation. So I'm wondering if you've had a chance to take a look at those and if you had any comments. The structure is similar to the structure of the other uh, completed competencies in that it looks at, um, can you explain the differences among different types of devices within this category, which of course is a key function of a demonstration, comparing and contrasting. Uh, being able to talk about the features and functionality, understanding who can benefit, uh, familiarity with the range both in complexity and cost, with computers looking at um, alternate access and including emerg emerging technologies like brain computer interface. Uh, being able to communicate to consumers some of the terms that might be used in describing computers and related comparing and contrasting a range of product types, uh, demonstrating built-in features, understanding potential funding sources, understanding when formal assessment may, may be required and who has the credentials, what credentials might be indicated for such an assessment. And of course, uh, staff competencies in this area should include familiarity with the taxonomy and the ability to appropriately classify items in this category. Under recreation, sports, and leisure, uh, this is one of those categories like uh, learning and uh, cognition that is so broad. And uh, so you'll see, we just say um, you should have an awareness and be able to give at least two examples uh, with varying price points 
in a variety of categories under this uh, heading. So for example, toys and games, organized sports, both summer and winter, fitness equipment, musical instruments, arts, crafts, photography, gardening, horticulture, horseback riding, uh, audio and video equipment. Uh, here we also included some do-it-yourself options, if achievable. The ability to describe to consumers some of the vocabulary, being able to explain safety and risk factors, uh, to allow consumers to make informed choices, being able to discuss community resources, having a basic understanding of potential public and private funding sources, uh, especially since there tends to be uh, not so much available in the way of public funding sources and certification uh, requirements of evaluators that might assist in the identification and matching of appropriate equipment in this category. So since you all seem to be kind of quiet this afternoon, what I'm going to do is ask you to please take a look at uh, the draft competencies and provide uh, feedback to me, uh, particularly looking for the resource section which again is a section that we include on each of the areas so that somebody who wanted to learn more uh, about the particular area would know where to at least uh, begin. Okay, so moving on. I know many of you um, have already registered for ATIA and you might be trying to put your um, schedule together or make your uh, flight arrangements. Uh, we do not have any AT Strand sessions on Saturday. So if you need to go home uh, Friday late afternoon, uh, you won't be missing one of the AT Strand sessions per se, although of course you'll be missing things like the second annual ATIA Maker Day. So I think those of you in this COP will be very interested in approaches to managing your AT inventory and we'll have uh, three different approaches to share with you um, at ATIA and to talk about um, advantages and disadvantages. Um, okay, so uh, I forgot to mention, I also need a volunteer if you're interested in helping with the uh, vehicle modification um, competencies. So any other questions? You can either mute yourself, uh, unmute yourself, or you can chat. Okay, uh, you all I know are very aware of the importance of evaluating activities. So if you would please evaluate this webinar, I will be sending the link out as well. Uh, you can uh, put a save the date on Wednesday, December 12th, when we'll be talking with the people from my Notify, which is a fall alerting system. You can always refer to upcoming COP calls at the AT3 Center's events page, and you can also find archived demo loan calls and materials, as well as discounts and deals on the Demo Loan COP page. This captioned video will be posted in a few weeks. Uh, we can post the PowerPoint up sooner than that. 
uh, so that you can refer and share it with uh, those others of your staff who may be interested. So last call for any comments. Okay, hearing none, we will adjourn for today. And thank you uh, as always for responding to COP uh, questions and to COP um, surveys. So thanks everyone and happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.